We're gonna have coffee. We're gonna have coffee. Like one of these days, like I just want to come in here and like get like a, just like a baguette and just gnaw on a baguette. Why can't you? I'm gluten free now. Hey, what's up? Can I get a large coffee with steamed almond milk? What do you want, babe? <laughs> uh, uh, mocha. Large. This is good. All right, HDSA Coffee Walk with Dr. George Yorling, Cheers, man. Chief Scientific and Mission Officer at HDSA. Let me ask you a question, Doc. How did you get involved with Huntington's disease? You know, I think it was definitely serendipity. Um, I was uh, finishing up my PhD and looking for a postdoctoral fellowship. I was up in Boston and thought I really wanted to work on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, which are two diseases that affect my family. And uh, got this call out of the blue from this guy I didn't know who told me to, hey, pop by, uh, pop by and visit us at Mass General Hospital. And uh, being young and flexible and willing, I, I did. And he told me all about Huntington's disease and what he was working on, and it just clicked. You know, you're with a guy, and you're like, uh, yeah, I like you. I like this. I think we can do this. <laughs> so awesome. uh, the rest is history. I joined the lab, and that was over 20 years ago. And uh, here I am. Now, from when that 20, you know, when you first got involved 20 years ago, how has HD science evolved? Oh man, it's night and day. Um, you know, I'm dating myself, but 20 years ago, we were just a few years removed from finding the gene that causes the disease. So we spent a lot of time, uh, you know, developing mouse models and cellular models and fly models and just trying to understand what the gene does, which we're still trying to do. Um, and back then there was no one working on the disease, right? So. Uh, here we are in 2020 and we've got dozens, if not more than, you know, maybe approaching 40 or 50 different companies working on Huntington's disease now, which is just would not have happened 20 years ago. So you just returned from the HD Therapeutic Conference in Palm Springs, California. Any exciting news you can share? Yeah, it's another, uh, it's kind of a highlight for HD researchers to go out to Palm Springs and, and attend the CHGI conference and, and just come back this week. Um, there's a lot of exciting progress from a number of different companies that are working on uh, Huntington lowering trials, uh, clinical trials where they're testing different types of drugs uh, that were specifically targeting the Huntington gene that causes HD. So uh, hopefully in the next year or two, we'll start hearing, uh, we'll be, I know we'll be hearing a lot more about uh, clinical trials that are gonna be starting in the United States, as well as uh, hopefully some more results promising results from the companies that are taking are running these trials that's awesome I mean and you hear it all the time where you know finding a you know treatment for Huntington's disease will open up the door to potential treatments for other diseases you know why, why is that how, how does how does that all work yeah I mean it's, it's a good point and it I think it goes both ways right it's um, the the work that we're doing as HD researchers will undoubtedly you know kind of help advance uh, other disease areas like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, but I, I also think that the HD community uh, of late has made great progress kind of riding on some of the coattails of progress from other rare diseases like uh, spinal muscular atrophy or SMA or Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. These are diseases that are, um, you know, genetic diseases uh, that are, are, are brain diseases or muscular diseases that are being treated, at least the approaches are very similar to what we're trying to do uh, for Huntington's disease. And uh, they're in some ways more advanced in clinical trial development. So we're learning from them as well. So a big part of your role at HDSA, you head up the mission team. Um, you know, what are the new resources uh, that HDSA is providing families across the country? Yeah, no, um, you know, we, over the past year or so, we've been adding, I, I think, a lot of really valuable resources um, uh, for hopefully for families and patients. Uh, a couple notable additions have been uh, the addition of online support groups, uh, particularly this most recently, we've just added a Spanish online support group. Um, we've added a, in a partnership with Amwell, uh, we have, have a telehealth program where families can get free uh, uh, behavioral support with a social worker or psychologist, um, you know, using you know, Skype or, or their computer so they can get that support that they need without even leaving the comfort of their own home. We've 
continue to add more youth resources through our NYA, our National Youth Alliance, where it's, you know, we have retreats, annual retreat, we have our annual retreat our, at, at NYA Day, but we also have these retreats um, that um, are run around the country um, to kind of bring convention to the folks that can't maybe make convention. Alison Bartlett, who, who is our manager of disability programs, she's there to help families navigate um, a social security disability um, and help them with their applications and kind of ensure success. So this is another free resource available to families at HGSA. Now the disability chats, Allison, um, you know, monthly on a monthly basis, she'll put the webinars together. You know, she'll deliver, uh, you know, the updates on disability, uh, social security. Uh, you know, we've seen, I mean, just the response. I mean, this is something that the families really needed, you know, and just yeah. navigating that process. And, um, you know, so it, it just goes beyond, you know, yeah. uh, you know, just the, the research and things like, you know, just making sure families have all the, the tools they need to kind of navigate their way through this, this disease. So, no, it's been great to see the response. Um, you know, it's not living with, with HD in my family, but to see that the, uh, the response has been so strong. Um, you know, you can lose sight of that when you're not dealing with it on a daily basis, but it was really exciting to see how much of a need or a void that, that Allison and her resources are filling. That's great. That's great. Now you added Sarah as well to the team. Sarah, yeah. I mean, just the beginning of this year, um, you know, HDSA kind of from at the center of what we do at a, in the mission, the center of our mission is patients and families. And uh, we take that really seriously, whether it's um, through you know, our centers of excellence and our care program, even through our research, which is patient-centered. Um, there's been an a increased demand, as we were talking about like all of these different companies that are working on HD now. Um, they want to hear from patients and caregivers. They want to design trials that will meet their needs. Um, not what, how they understand HD, but how patients and, and families understand HD and incorporate that. So to kind of get ahead of that, HDSA has hired a, uh, a director of patient engagement for the very first time, Sarah Waite Ardini, who uh, we were able to coax away from the National Hemophilia Foundation here in New York. And uh, she's going to be heading up our, our HD COPE um, program, which is the uh, Coalition for Patient Engagement. It's a program that works with... Uh, sponsors of trials and uh, coordinates with them to develop, to get them the, the information or perspectives that they want uh, as they're developing, whether it's their clinical trial protocol or their um, you know, materials related to the clinic, uh, clinical trial that they're going to hand out in the clinic, things like that. All right, so what should families look forward to in 2020? I'm looking forward to hearing from more companies on their clinical trial results, such as Wave Life Science. Um, they should be announcing results of their Precision HD 1 and 2 studies later this year. And then uh, more, more companies just joining the space. I think families are going to be, their heads are going to be spinning with trying to keep, keep sense of all the different companies that are joining the HD community and working on Huntington's disease as an indication. So uh, it's just exciting time in HD research and it, it's been exciting for years, but with each month, it just keeps getting more and more exciting, more I and more and more hopeful. You know that that we're we can do this, and that we're you know effective treatments are are on the horizon. It's not a dream anymore. It's going to be reality. Yeah, no, it's listen. You know, listen. I, we're not where we want to be right now, but we're definitely on the right path, yeah. and and uh, the future is definitely bright for us. And and uh, listen, I want to thank you for taking Thanks, time. Man. It's fun. And uh, yeah, we'll do this again sometime. So hey, Cheers, HSA Coffee Walk, Dr. Yeah, George. Dr. It. George is out. Out. <laughs>